What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast uh, with me, your host. Um, a couple things to talk about this week. Uh, a lot of cool shit, actually. So I don't know if, I mean, if you have Netflix, you might have seen it, but David Letterman, who was like a crazy talk show host, uh, had his shit going for, I mean, decades. But he has a show called My Next Guest Needs No Introduction. And it's basically like a podcast, but it's like he sits down on a stage with a... I mean, every single person he has on there is like iconic. Uh, I just watched Kanye West's episode. Like I've, I heard that Kanye was going to be on there. I watched him before, like Barack Obama was on there, George Clooney. Um, and David Letterman's like, obviously an incredible interviewer. He's just like, it's almost like he is like, it's like, he's like not, he's so good that it's not good a little bit. That's hard to say, but it's like, he is just like a goofy type guy, but, uh, I love him. I, I love the way he, he talks to people, but, uh, he also is iconic. So he has the range to get these like insane people. So like, I mean, Kanye West, like it's been rumored that Kanye West is going to go on Joe Rogan's podcast. And that's been rumored for, I mean, I think probably like it's probably been over a month now, but like that's going to pop up at some point. But Kanye West was on David Letterman's fucking show. And it's just them two sitting down on a stage talking to each other. And like, if you don't, if you've never seen the show, he, I guess he just sells tickets out to like these stadium or not stadiums, but fucking like auditoriums. And I guess the majority of the time people don't know who is going to be on the show that day. And he came out and he was like, Oh, no one knows who's going to be here today. Right. And everyone's like, Nope. And then he's like, all right, well, uh, Kanye West. And like, imagine if you were sitting in this auditorium and like, I mean, Kanye West walks out and you're just like, what the fuck? And uh, you never know how it's going to go. Like he could fucking be a genius. He could be out of pocket and crazy. You never know. But he, uh, it was a fantastic conversation. Like I always talk shit on Kanye because like, I just think he's a fucking lunatic, you know, like I think that there's, re- and, and after watching this interview, I mean, he, I mean, he is, he's a, he's a psychopath kind of, but he also is like a genius. He really is. And I, I think that, you know, him, he's so like weird and like recluse. Like he's like a recluse that like you can't ever have like a a long interview of him. Like you don't see him doing like the breakfast club as often. And you don't see him like, like them real big people ain't doing it all the time. Like you don't see fucking Drake doing the breakfast club all the time. You know what I mean? And like Kanye West is going to do whatever the hell he wants. But, uh, I mean, it was an hour long conversation. They talked about mental health. They talked about his fashion. They talk about, uh, all kinds of dope ass shit. And, uh, it was just a really good conversation. So then I look at who some other episodes are with David Letterman and, um, Ellen DeGeneres was on and I love Ellen DeGeneres. Like, I don't know how anyone could not love Ellen DeGeneres, but, uh, Ellen DeGeneres was on and it was another incredible, you know, like, it's, it's incredible. If you've ever listened to my podcast, I basically like, you know, I always tell people that if there's someone that I like, I always go try to find interviews with them because like, I like learning about them as a person. You know, I watched Ellen DeGeneres on, on her TV show for like, you know, fucking years. She's been doing it for like 19 years. I think she said, but it's like, you never learn about what a person is actually like until like you have some time to sit down and talk with them. And the only time you're ever going to get Kanye West to sit down for an hour and bullshit with someone is for a purpose. And David Letterman is the fucking goat and he has this crazy range, but, uh, it's absolutely worth watching a lot of dope ass people on there. Um, another thing, Chernobyl is about to be over. I haven't watched the finale yet. By the time you hear this, I'll have watched it, but, uh, dope ass show on HBO. Definitely got to check that out. If you like, uh, I mean, if you just like watching shit, you know, like I, I like watching shit. I'm always just like watching shit. And let's just, I mean, there's so much good stuff to watch now. And uh, Handmaid's Tale just dropped again, the third season. And like, that's going to be madness. Like if you haven't watched that show yet and you have Hulu, you know, just like, 
just put down the office for a second and just switch over and try something new. I know it's like a super big commitment, you know, like I, I feel that way with like the Sopranos and Game of Thrones because it's like, fuck, like I'm about to watch this show. I'm about to get into it. And that's like all that I'm going to want to do is binge watch this shit. But, uh, you know, there's just, there's good shit out. We live in a time where there's dope shit all the time. And, uh, I'm pumped about it. Um, I did an escape room with my friends this weekend and uh, I've never done an escape room ever. And, uh, you know, I always thought they would be like kind of corny. Like I never knew what they would be like. And I was like, uh, escape room. Like, we'll see how it goes. And it was honestly so dope. Like if you have been like thinking about it and you're just, you know, on the fence, if it's going to be cool or not, I'm telling you, if you go in there with some of your friends and you try to do an escape room, you're going to have a good fucking time. It's like, (laughs) It was super difficult. Like once we got the ball rolling a little bit, like everyone, like we had seven people and we're all just like fucking screaming at us. Like, hurry up. The fucking time is running out. And like, we got like 15 minutes into it and we had nothing, but then like, you know, they start, you know, you get the ball rolling and it starts going smoothly, but, uh, super, super sick, uh, super, super sick time. Uh, definitely fun. But, uh, the reason everyone's here, uh, we have a great episode this week. I'm pumped about this week's episode. Um, you know, I, it's been a long time coming. So this week I talked to, uh, one of my good friends, his name's Justin Boyd. Uh, Justin Boyd is a photographer from Pittsburgh who, you know, he specializes, in like candid type photography and like, uh, you know, concert photography. And I mean, if you ever follow his Instagram account and it's Justin Boyd, Justin Boyd photo. Yeah. Justin Boyd photo on Instagram. But, uh, if you ever follow his Instagram, you've seen that, uh, he was Mac Miller's photographer for, um, many years, uh, like seven, eight years. And, um, he, you, you know, like I felt, I felt a certain way, like trying to like, you know, talk to him on here, obviously because of, uh, you know, Mac Miller passing the last year. And, uh, it's just, you know, I, I didn't want to like, I didn't want it to feel like it was exploiting that or, uh, kind of taking advantage of like that. But, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm friends with Justin and, and, and I wanted to like focus on how he kind of got to that point because I mean, like that's the majority of his life, you know, uh, as far as like his career, like, I mean, he, he got involved like the first few years doing like local shows and everything. And it kind of stemmed off and, uh, he started working with Mac Miller and, uh, was with him for years. So, you know, uh, this episode, we talk about all this, we talk about what got him into photography. We talk about how he kind of developed his style and how he approached like, uh, jumping into the game and, uh, kind of how it took off. We talk about how he met Mac Miller and how they linked up. We talk about, you know, just how that process began and kind of how it unfolded. Um, and it was just a really great episode. You know, I'm thankful to have Justin as a friend. Uh, I'm thankful that he was cool enough to share what it was like to work with such an incredible person. And, uh, I'm just, I don't know. I hope you enjoy the episode. I know I did. And, uh, I feel like you'd be a fucking fool if you didn't. Um, but yeah, without further ado, episode 73 of I'll call you right back podcast with Justin Boyd. Hello? I have no idea how old they are and like I just want to know like where their uh, thought process is coming from because yeah. they reference like you know Zelda shit you could obviously tell that they smoke weed but uh, they have that weird like super produced like like beats like I bet you that uh, his his name is uh, 
JP, but I think his name in the group is like Lazy J. I honestly don't know much about him yet, yeah. but uh, it's dope. But like, yeah, I don't want to listen to local people. And that person has been on like Sykes podcast before. And like, I feel that if I listen to people's local shit, mm. um, it's dark. It's going to like kind of rub off on me. And I just don't want anyone's like, I don't want influenced by anyone. Yeah, I just want all my shit to be myself. You know what I mean? I feel you. It's weird. Um, so you, you almost got struck by lightning. Yeah. Now, I want to know, like, uh, I always see, like, David DiCello. Is that how you pronounce his name? Is DiCello or DiCello? I'm really, I'm one of those. He ain't going to listen to this anyway, but. Uh, <laughs> I, hey, maybe, man. He follows me now. Oh, shit. He, uh, I, like, I've always seen his shit. Like, everyone posts it, like, the news and everything. And, and uh, I always see, like, them crazy-ass photos he takes. And I always wonder, like, like what the fuck do Ian's do? Ian's just go out in the middle of the night. And, like, if there's a storm, Ian's are like, yeah, yeah. And Ian's just go and post up. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I typically don't, though. Like, I, uh, I mean, I do. But I'm not. So I was on my way to do a shoot for the Common Heart um, yeah. that, that my homies banned. And... Um, I was meeting them down in the south side, and like as I was leaving, it was like the lightning was fucking crazy. Like it was literally, yeah, like, it was. It looked like War of the Worlds. Yeah, like every three seconds there was like a flash from a different direction, and I was like, I have to go try it because it wasn't raining; it was just lightning. And yeah, it was, was like, real this bizarre. Is sick. I was like, I was like, I could probably get something fucking awesome. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just swing up to Mount Washington real quick, like before I go down to the south side and just like take these photos, like to see if I can get something. And I go. What time was it? It was like ten, ten o'clock probably. Yeah, because like I, I, that was on what the, what night? Because I remember I'd work the next day. I went to bed early Tuesday night because that was the night I got. I just driven back from Atlantic City. Yeah, because it was fucking. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and it looked like War of the Worlds. Right. I was like, "Damn, that looks crazy, crazy." And I was like looking. So I, I like pulled up and I passed like the first incline and I'm like, "Where should I?" post up and i was gonna go down to the second incline like by the um i can't remember what that restaurant's called but there's like a restaurant down there um yeah like right by the incline that overlooks that and sometimes i shoot from there but i was like i'm gonna go just like right here on that on that grand view like on that very beginning and i saw like a parking spot so i was like pulled in yeah and then i see two other dudes set up and i like didn't think I was just like, oh, like, cool. Like, there's other people shooting this. So I was like, I just posted up next to both of them. And then, like, I realized that the one dude was Dave. And then this other dude uh, was, his name was Jake. And, like, we were just, like, they had their all, like, he does that shit, like, all the time. He's yeah, out like every he's, single day. Yeah, he's always posting and he has content. all his, like, fucking contraptions. Like, he has this, uh, he has this thing that goes on top of your camera. And it'll sense the lightning strike. And it'll just trigger the shutter. Oh, really? So it's, yeah, it's like a flash trigger. So it's it's like a, or a light trigger, basically. So like, how does sh- that work? So when the well, I guess like when the sky lights up or when it sees like a flash, it'll just trigger the shutter to uh, take the picture. Uh. So like he's just like getting all these like crazy shots, and like I'm just over here just doing like a long exposure, just like holding my shutter and over and over and over. Yeah, again. and. Like, we're looking down. There's, like, that church on Grandview, and we're, like, looking down, and we're seeing the, like, storm moving in because, like, all these flashes of lightning are coming. And then there was this big one, like, right above the uh, right above that church. And that we Mary like, of the Mount? Yeah. Yeah. And we were just like, oh, shit. Like, that's crazy. And dude was like, this storm's about to be on us in, like, 30 seconds. And I was like, sick. We're going to get something cool. <laughs> And then, like, we were, I, me and Dave were both, like, just, like, filming, like, with our phones, just, like, trying to get, like, some cool lightning. Yeah. And then I filmed a couple, and then, like, that last one that I filmed, like, was, I was filming, like, as the strike, like, hit right by us. So, it, like, it Yeah, that, that, that video was, in, how, how far do you think that was away? 20 yards, maybe. Yeah, like, dude. It like, was so close. That video, uh, whenever, because I woke up, and I saw, like, nine people reposted it yeah and i was like what the fuck and i clicked on it and and i'm sitting there waiting and i saw that first little flash and i was like oh that's sick and like before that thought went out of my head that whole frame just yeah, like shook because shook, it scared the fuck out of me like i it shook me and like yeah i could smell like you like felt a, it i felt bro it felt like i plugged my like i plugged something into an outlet and i got shocked like that's how 
that close, wow. like, like a intense bang, like it was, but yeah. it was still 20 yards away from me. Jeez. Like, that <laughs> shit is crazy. And what like, did I, they say? Well, well, so me and that Jake dude were like, both just like yo i'm out like i grabbed my shit out like that so there's that picture out like the fourth frame on my yeah Instagram. where you're running it was like so like i took that so my my shutter is on like all like uh like on a like a set so like every time it takes one it just keeps going takes another one right after one, yeah. one after another so i'm just sitting there that happens i didn't even realize i got the picture until i got to the south side because like i literally just freaked out so like that shot happened like the lightning happened and then like another one started after it and then i was like fuck this i grabbed all my stuff and like grabbed my oh, you dipped and, after that yeah i literally let, <laughs> dude i was gone 30 seconds and i was parked right under a tree so i was like freaking uh, yeah. out even more i'm like i'm like i know it's unlikely to get struck by lightning twice but i was like i'm not taking any i've ran into my car yeah like that's nuts the other dude jake also, he was like, he's like, no, 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 like, fuck that. Dave was like, like, thrilled junkie. Like, he was like, woo. Like, like Lieutenant like, Dan yeah, and Forrest like, Gump. He was like, that was crazy. He was like, <laughs> come out. on, you motherfucker. But so we all, like, I dipped like fast. Jake left because it started raining too. Like, right yeah. after that strike, it was just like, we were bugging out and then it just started like raining heavy. So, like, we all dipped. I go down to uh, the south side and I'm like, I'm like still shaking. Like I'm like my heart's racing. I'm like, that was fucking nuts. Like I could have died. Yeah. Like that was crazy. And then I go in, uh, we did the shoot at Carmela's and I like go in and my friend Mike's there and he's like, he's like, you okay? I was like, bro, I was like, I almost got struck by lightning. Like that, like, and then there was like some drunk girl at the bar. She was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> and I was like, I'm about to sock this bitch. Like I was so mad. So I was like, yeah, I, yeah, I really that was did. definitely one of the, and then I pulled my things. camera out and I was like, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I didn't even know. And yeah, I was that you like, got the, yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. Like, uh, that Dave dude, the, he's out there every single day doing he, he that. He was shit. still out there. Like I, I, so I posted that video and then he was like, he hit me on Instagram and he was like, he's like, yeah, we're still up here. He's like, we came back and they were up there until like two or three in the morning because the storms kept, and then like fog came through. But I think the storms kind of like dwindled off. So. That would be a wild uh, job to have like he does with like the, you know, like he's basically like, you know, he's famous for his skylines and stuff yeah. like that. Like people, you always see them being reposted and, so like you basically think like if you hear that there's going to be a crazy storm he's just like fuck it i gotta go yeah and go out there and do that yeah i guess that's uh that video was definitely the most insane thing it was wild man that's, that's some like world star shit that shit was crazy it definitely I mean, I, could get some world store on that yeah, I, I was trying like I, you almost fucking like I, I i i didn't know like what to expect with that and i was like wow really did almost get struck by lightning it was wild man yeah. now uh you're not someone that's like always out taking photos of like you know landscapes and everything i, I no. feel like you, you i you do i do but yeah I, I like i'll get into like moods like swings of it where i'll just go because i like there's nothing that i hate more than going out and because i love a good sunset that's like my thing so yeah like, that's why I like dave's like dave's work is awesome he like, always has really good sunsets and yeah. like uh, sunrises it's nothing I hate more than like going out and like setting up and waiting and then it just being like a not, not that good. good. But then I'll then I'll be not out and I'll be like, fuck man, this sunset yeah, it's so crazy killer. and purple and, and I'm orange. not there. And then I'll like rush and then I'll be like, it's just not I already missed it. Like so like it's just like putting yourself in the right place, right time. But if you do it every day, you're it's like Yeah, you you're gonna miss. get some yeah, good it's like shit. you're not gonna miss. It's like if you're rapping every single day, you're yeah. gonna like come up with some shit. That's what like did you watch Wiz's interview on uh Yeah, I watched on um, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yeah, I watched like I, I didn't get to watch the whole thing yet, but I watched like a good like 35, 40 minutes. It was it. interesting. Yeah, it was it's different. It's interesting how like uh you know every person that I talk to is like you you could like feel they have like a different like they all have their own their own lanes and like all different uh, like photographers like if you look at someone's Instagram page you could tell uh, like their style like that dude does a lot of like the landscapes and everything yeah. and like you do a lot of like uh, like uh, what would you even call it like like live performance 
photography like yeah i do i don't know i like uh i like candid stuff and concert photography and yeah concert photography i guess yeah. that's a better way to than live for performance photography <laughs> but uh it, it, it's 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 wild so like now you've been taking photos like ever since i can remember you like ever yeah. since like like when did you even get into it uh i want to say high school was like when i really started like doing it a lot uh because like that was when like Wyatt and them were starting like the bands, like yeah. Belay and Dollface. Yeah. So I was like taking photos of them. So that that's just, why you kind of got into it, though. Is like no, I mean, I I don't really remember why. I've always just kind of like liked to take foot. Like my mom got me a camera when I was young, like a Where's Waldo camera when I was younger. Yeah. Like she got me this like pretty sick uh, Olympus like film camera when we were in New York. And I wish I could find it because I, I would a foam camera. No, a film. film oh, camera. film camera. Yeah, I was yeah. like, what? And I, it was sick. It was like this. Samega had one. Like Samega had like the exact one that I had that he bought like at a thrift shop for like five bucks. But yeah. like anywhere else I try to find them, they're like two hundred bucks because it was a nice camera. Yeah, and like. like Whenever you were like, whenever you were like younger in like middle school and shit like that, like I remember like making like movies and shit with mm-hmm. like our friends. Like yeah. we would just make stupid like. Oh, that was all my high school was, man. I, like for my uh, astronomy class, we just I just would film. I would walk around like our teacher, Mister Thomas, was like he was so cool, but he also like. He, where, where'd you go? Fox Chapel. Oh, okay, so he would just like give us these projects, and like for example, like I had to do a project on Mercury. Or like the planet, yeah, not the, yeah, <laughs> not the, the element. element. Uh, I did one on Mercury. We did one on the Big Dipper, and basically, I would just like walk around the school during that class. Like, so I would just leave class, and he would be like, "Yeah," hey. I'm like, "I'm gonna work on my project." He'd be like, "Sure," and I would just like walk around like filming people. Be like, "What do you know about Mercury? What do you know about the Big <laughs> Dipper?" And like, people would be like, "The what?" And like, I would just like super cut like all of these people. Like saying, saying like dumb shit, yeah. Or I would just walk up to like we had a friend named Kevin, and for some reason it was funny to for people to say his name. So I literally walked up and I was like, "Will you just say Kevin into the camera?" And I got like I don't know, like fifty five people to say Kevin into the camera, and I just did this super long cut. And so it was just like that. I would just make like stupid fucking yeah. videos, and literally he would just be like, "But I would still put like all the like Stuff I would yeah I would meet the criteria the exactly, yeah. but it would be like." While I was explaining about the Big Dipper, there would be like gas explosions going on in the background that we did at my yeah, friends. That like just we like would, skate video cuts. Yeah, like we would we would fill like can like Coke cans up with gasoline, let it on fire, and then throw bowling balls at it or something, and just like, watch like fl- you know like just really stupid shit. We had a teacher in middle school. He was our history teacher, and like every week we had to do something called uh, I think it was like current events or whatever. You had to like write yeah. like a little page about some shit and. Uh, we started asking him, like, I had my friend, uh, his name was Shane, and then another dude named was Chris, and we were all in this class together, and, I mean, the papers were boring, like, like super, super boring. So we were like, oh, we liked making videos. We were like, we make a video. So we did a current event about, like, some sort of, like, it was back whenever, like, shit with, like, 9-11 was going on. Yeah. And uh, I remember we did this video that was, like, kind of fucked up. Like, I got pretend executed, and, like, we showed it in school, <laughs> And, uh, like, nowadays, you'd never be able to yeah, put that Yeah, that won't fly now, man. It doesn't fly. <laughs> um, all right, so before I get too into it, I do an opening segment. What, 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 uh, what's in the cup, cup, cup? It's called What's in the Cup. What's in your cup? What is in my cup? Your I second got, choice. I got some life water. Uh, my second choice. I couldn't find a Sentia in Millville. It's, it's uh few and far between here millville is not refined enough to have a scent of water <laughs> life water is as best as you get here in Milvo, but it's it's a it's a close second close I'm, second I, I like water man i'm a water guy i, I enjoy some water i need to, everyone should just drink more water yeah I, I drink too much alcohol to not drink water people have chosen a sentia though probably like five times i've had on here yeah maybe like five people have chosen it and uh i don't know i feel like you could tell the difference of water but supposedly a sentia is trash it's trash. Yeah, there's a there's a water sauvignon. Uh, a water sauvignon is. I think I'm pronouncing it right. But you ever listen to your mom's house? 
with Tom Segura. No, I've heard of it. No, I haven't listened to it yet. So uh, they're hilarious, but they're like super vulgar. They talk about piss and shit and just like weird ass stuff. But uh, they're they're huge now. Like their 500 episode, they just had Brendan Urie on there, wow. and he's like a big fan of them. Mm-hmm. And like, there's just so many hidden jokes and everything like that. But Tom Segura calls himself the Water Champ, so he had this water solving yay on there. And I can't remember this dude's name, but he's a short. Like, he looks like a short mini James Bond, and he talks about, like, what water is legit and what water is not. And uh, I'm pretty sure he said Ascentia is trash, but Damn. it tastes good. It tastes good. Whatever. I was always... See, I always... This dude drinking, like, $80 bottles of, like, mineral water, though, so, like, he's not in our league. Yeah, I can't do that. I, so, I don't know. There, There's, like... There's this water that I tried. I think, uh, I think Breeze had it, that, like, Kanger water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, that shit's fucking... Uh, Lonnie talked about that on here. It, it's uh, it was yeah, he, yeah. He did. He, he said he, he's like uh, Breeze got this water that's infused with Thor's hammer. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's, says some funny shit like that, it's, bro. It's so good. It's it's like he this says is they, water. They uh, they give it in that uh, they have it stocked at that gym that they all go to yeah. out in California. I can't remember. I can't remember what the fuck it's called. Anyway, so uh, it all started in like high school and shit like that, though cameras yeah. and everything. Yeah, we and like uh, we had like a photography class in high school. Like me and me and Samago were like, you went to school with him? Yeah. Okay. I, I've been in school with Samago since elementary school. I oh think. wow! Yeah, I think I met him in third or fourth grade, probably. So like, if you're into cameras and shit, and all the rest of the friends got into bands and everything, like you kind of. Like you accepted that, like yeah. like that was your role. I was like, yeah, I was the like, that the, was the role. Yeah, I was the camera guy. And like, uh, I mean, f- fortunate enough for you, it's like uh, all the bands back then, like they all were fucking big. Yeah, like Bly was probably the biggest like metal band in Pittsburgh for a, for a little while. Yeah, there, for 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 a long while, for a little while there, and it's just like. Uh, they always had shows. Yeah. It's like, how often was that? Like, can, can you remember how wild that time period was where like, we were just at shows it was all like every the, weekend, every was weekend there were shows yeah. every single weekend. We were just at random shows with local bands. Yeah. And like that whole, I don't know. That whole fucking like scene was a wild. Time. It's wild. just cause like how small Pittsburgh is. It would be like that many. Sh- and like people would still come to them. It would be like, yeah. It's like, if you think of like that whole like metal, like emo click, like, that was always strong. Yeah. Like there was always just like a because if you think of like the hip hop and shit like that, like you got a lot of people that come to them shows, but like nothing like them, yeah. like emo shows. Yeah, like, those things used to pack out crazy. It was wild, man. I don't. I really don't. I don't get it. Never really understood. Never it. It understood. Was a, it was a weird time. Never understood it at all. So like, uh, whenever you started taking like live, like like where were you like learning? Like obviously photography class, you get taught a little bit of shit. But yeah. like, was it just firsthand like experience? Yeah. yeah the, the man. Yeah. <laughs> if you go back and look at some of like my first ever concert photos, they're like pretty not great. Yeah, but you know, it's, you got to just like trial and error, basically. I was thinking me. about like people that are taking like uh, like concert photos, and I feel like that they have a little bit harder start because like shit is all dark, mm. and like uh, you know, if you're taking like wedding photography and like pictures where there's lights and everything like that, it's a little bit different than you yeah. just like taking pictures in a dark room, bro. Especially like like late two thousands, like two thousand eight to like two thousand ten, like the digital cameras were good like yeah. they were sick but what did you like, have the at that time i had like a nikon like d50 or d80 or something yeah um the cameras were good but like for concerts it was it, i didn't have like the the greatest lenses like the fastest lenses so it was like hard because like that it didn't pick up like the light like the cameras didn't pick up as much light as they do now like the light sensitivity in cameras now are fucking insane like you could yeah. just be in a dark room with a lit match and fucking get like a crazy photo now like you couldn't do that 10 years ago yeah like it's fucking crazy so i would i used to like go on like to flicker and want like see all these like concert photographers that would bring like their own lights like they would bring like 
extra flashes like and set up one like on like stage right one on stage left like, yeah one like hanging from the fucking like an automatic house. flash yeah like they clearly do it like penguin games and yeah, like, yeah, shit yeah. like that like they'll have like the strobe set up all around so like they would they would come they would go to the show like before um like sound check and everything and they would set up all their flashes and like that's how i was like i was like following these concert photographers and i was like these dudes are sick like there was this one shot that this guy got of um fuck wow i'm, I'm an asshole what's what's dude's name from aerosmith steven tyler steven tyler <laughs> oh, i drew a huge blank right. right there um this crazy shot of steven tyler he's like holding the mic and he's like leaning down into the crowd and like there's this huge like reflection of the crowd off his glasses and like it just looks so sick and i was like that's a newer photo or no this was back in like Uh, 2008 and i was like this is fucking awesome man like yeah i want to take photos like that like that shit is hard so it's like you're seeing people that like you're that are doing things that look good to you and then like you want to replicate them yeah kind of like find your own way to figure out how to do that like i want to be able to take a photo that looks like that like that shit looks so tight yeah now i mean so 2007 2008 we had the internet and shit like that but it definitely was not like what it is now like i try to think about when the first time uh because what are you 29 30 you're 30 so you're a year older than me like but but we're in the same vein it's like when do you remember the time whenever we had that just like all the time like youtube where you can just like google anything or search anything because i remember back in like in middle or in, in high school and shit like we had to do a little bit of like work yeah. whenever you're like trying to find shit yeah but now it's just like oh, everything's just right on you i would say like i don't know man i want to say like probably a Around 2000 and like right when Twitter started, man, like one, all the once all of that social media started to like take over, yeah, that's when everybody was like, Oh, I could just do this, and like that. There's just so many people on YouTube now, yeah, you can Google anything. I have a 92 Buick LeSabre, and I was like, 92 Buick LeSabre automatic antenna, googled it, and there's some fucking old dude in a farm doing taking a an antenna out and i'm like i cannot believe this is on there and i'm pretty sure it got over a stack for views just like like maybe 1200 but like hey, just but this random dude and there's, there's just like 1200 other people out there that were just as curious as you as to like exactly exactly and that's what's it's crazy to think about like how that all progresses because like you're kind of just like like I think about like uh, the podcasting shit like whenever i tried to do one like 4 years ago there was no like there wasn't like information like how to yeah. guides like there is now like yeah. anyone in the world could just google how to start a podcast and it'll literally give you steps right so like if you're taking photos and shit back then it like your inspiration had to come from like all them like crazy people yeah like who it, did you like back then it so honestly like it was a lot of um i liked a lot of old stuff like there was this one film photographer that did like a lot of really cool darkroom manipulation and I'm not gonna remember his name because that's all right. I haven't. Ah, uh, oh man, he was so tight. But he did like all this stuff, and like so, it was basically Photoshop in in a dark room. Yeah. So like everything that you would have to do in a dark room to get like, so he would mark off pieces of the paper, like the the film paper that you would you know expose the light onto yeah he would mark pieces off so he would expose like one part of the paper he would mark that off uncover the other parts expose that Uh. and like he would put like different images together but it would look so fucking like seamless and he was so dope and oh man i'm i'm gonna have to like look up his name because i can't remember it but he's really tight um, but yeah, just like, I don't know, like a lot of people on, um, cause at the time there wasn't Instagram. So it was like MySpace. it was like MySpace and Flickr were, were where I like, I never went on Flickr. I don't remember ever like frequenting that a lot. You probably wouldn't. Cause it's not like a place that like, if you were a photographer, that's like where you hosted your images. It was like Flickr, or like photo bucket or if you uh, had yeah, your yeah, own yeah, yeah. website. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I used, I used Flickr like anytime. I like shot anything or did something cool. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna post these on Flickr. Like my fucking, um, my Wiz photos from Black and Yellow. Yeah, from the Black and Yellow video shoot. Like that's where I originally posted 
uh, oh on Flickr on Flickr, and that that's where like Damn. they fucking like literally anytime. What you year Google, was that? Two thousand and eleven, ten or eleven, maybe early two thousand eleven. That's fucking crazy to if think you, like how quick it's. Because <laughs> they, I just remember I posted them, and then that that was like. They were just like like everything I saw about the black and yellow. Even to this day, like that's like a lot of your photos. Yeah, because there was no other photos taken that day. Like I was the only other photographer there. Oh, really? Yeah, because Bill was shooting the video, um, and then my buddy Dave, who was the one who told me to come, was doing second camera. So like they didn't have anybody that was just like just taking B roll shit. Yes, yeah, so I was just like there, just snapping photos. No, that like that's uh so so whenever you're taking like whenever you're getting into like the photography pretty heavy and like you're obviously taking photos of like you know like widespan and all them shit, uh like when is the first time you're starting to like get like any money for doing this shit? Is I mean obviously that they're your friends, that's all for free, but like yeah. when did you start like developing like kind of like monetizing what you wanted to do? Um I feel like photographers like I feel like that they're like that people in the beginning they do free work people they do free work for everyone because everyone expects that and then people see their free work they see that they're dope and they like put some time into it and everything like that yeah. and then they start getting like some respect for it and people like pay them yeah i mean i i would say like when i started doing weddings probably oh yeah um which was right around like late to like 2009 um I would do like a couple shoots for like random bands and you know, but I was like, you know, 75, 100 bucks or whatever. Yeah, nothing crazy. Yeah, so, but you know, it's. But was that something that like, like you doing them like them random shoots and everything like that? Like, were you, was your mindset like, I'm gonna kind of make this my career? Like photos? Yeah, I was at the time, I feel like in like 2009, 2006. So like I'm trying to remember what year I bought my uh my Canon. That's like, the hardest thing is remembering timelines of shit. Like, yeah, like I had the I had like a Canon I got the Canon 5D with like Mark II and I remember it shot uh like HD like 1080 and I was like I'll just shoot like a bunch of local rap videos and yeah. like make money i was like this is how i'll do because like at the time like a camera that shot 1080 wasn't really it was like those big bulky like yeah huge like sony cameras like the bigger cameras and i was like, i never had one of those like our friend um Justin used to shoot like a bunch of music videos like he did Dollface's video yeah um and he let me come on and do like some behind the scenes stuff for him but he always had like these sick like HD like crazy setup yeah like sick I was like oh man those are so cool and then like these little SLRs came out with 1080 and I was like hell yeah I was like I can just shoot a f- fucking video on this little camera and, and it's 1080 and this will be sick and I'll just shoot videos and I didn't really like shooting videos no <laughs> no you like um, photography more than videos yeah a lot way more why I, I'm, though i'm not um like i have i have ideas of how to like i feel like i would be a better um director of photography than an actual filmer yeah like, I would like be, you have the ideas to do it but yeah to actually, like, I, like i have do it. like the shot ideas but like to execute how i want it to do like i I also don't really have, I never had the equipment to do what I wanted yeah. to do. Like I'm every shot I wanted to do required like, like a steady camera, a fucking dolly and track or a, like a jib or, you know, just not like, what are you using to edit back then? So I, I got, I bought final cut. They had that. When did final, when did the first final cut come out? Oh, final cut's been around. Whew, fuck. I actually don't know. I know final cut. Final cut has been like, that's like been the way that they've cut like movies for years. I want to say like possibly the late nineties final cut came out. Oh, maybe that, early, is that maybe old? early two thousands. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Cause okay. I think the one that I got was final cut nine. Yeah. When I bought it in like 2009 or 10. And what are you editing photos in back then? Uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. I've used Lightroom since Lightroom came out, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like, my old roommate in college um, put me on it. And he was like, this is... Because th- at the time, there was a... 
a camera raw thing for Photoshop that would, um, I mean, there's still the same thing, but there was like a camera raw, like codec that would like open up when you opened a photo in Photoshop and it would give you like all the same kind of setup that it would in Lightroom. And my roommate was like, you should check Lightroom out. And he gave me like, or that was the time when it was like really easy to pirate. Um, oh yeah. Uh, applications. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> I was like, I can just download this Lightroom for free. Yeah. Get this crack. Um, because even though I was in art school, it's not like they're going to give me. Yeah. So like you, you were a victim. I've had so many victims of the oh, yeah. art, Institute art Institute on here. Art Institute. Like pro- I bet you six people that I've had on here have been like, that's how I met, that's how I met Allie. Oh yeah, she said yeah. that. So, so you, yeah. <laughs> all right. So how did now we got to rewind this? How did you decide to go to the art institute? Like, what made you want to go there? Uh, not having anything else to do. Yeah, I feel like that they were fucking playing with all of us they because they made it look. Like me. They made it look so sick. You're yeah. like, fuck yeah, like, go in there, learning how to awesome. do cameras. Yeah. Like this, this is gonna be so dope. Look, look at the commercials. The guy just like me over the camera. Like it's like <laughs> he's oh, just like yeah. me. Yeah, like, look at that guy. It's like, like fuck you, mom and dad. Like I'm gonna be an artist. <laughs> I was because my mom was like, she was like, you should really do something. I was like, well, I mean, I like photography, so yeah, I'll just and like you know, I wasn't a straight A high yeah, school you, student. I hated so. school. It wasn't, you know, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, so no one wanted to go learn some worse shit yeah, after and shit all that, that I didn't. That I still don't need. Yeah, you I, don't. No, need. I don't need it any of it. I've learned. The only thing that I've learned in school is like basic addition and subtraction that I use on a daily basis. Yeah, I know. It's like you in think my about grammar, that stuff. Like, you know, there's like spelling maybe, but I talked to I talked to Nigel from uh, the New Wave podcast, mm-hmm. and he was talking about. He was like, I think it's fucked up that I learned that I that I had to learn y plus mx or y equals mx plus b, but I don't know like anything about like taxes or like yeah. loans or business yep. and like. If you think about that, it's crazy to think. Like it's, it's like I didn't get to learn. Like I was excluded from like home ec, so it's not like I, they taught me how to sew. I, like, I actually learned how to sew. In see, high school. I didn't. They like fucking played me. It was like, oh, you can do this class or you can do this class. And yeah. They made it seem like, oh, well, if you take that class, it's like, oh, the home ec is like all the girls are going to take that class. I was so like, it's like that's fuck fucked that. up, man. Like. I loved cooking. Oh yeah, like I want to make like a little yeah. chicken dump, chicken dumpling salad. Because it was like a chicken <laughs> dumpling salad. It was half and half. Like I remember, we had one nine weeks of home ec, and we had one nine weeks of sewing. Sewing was so fucking sick. Like I've always loved doing. I made a hoodie out of this thing. Damn. She was like, "That's the hardest thing you could do." Like you might not want to do that. I was like, "I'm getting a hoodie." So uh, I made this hoodie, and it was fucked up. It was this fleece, <laughs> like right where right where the hood came in. It was so bad. But uh, I remember making that, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna be." That's where my love of clothes started. Yeah, is like I was like, "I'm gonna start making clothes." It's like back whenever I started fucking with that hoodie. See? But the Art Institute, uh, yeah, I guess that they they just fucking sucked, right? They were the worst, man. They, they, they were the were, worst. They were the worst. They so were, how long did you go there? A year and a half. And was it a two? It's a two year. I think it was a three year for me. <clears throat> so what happened? Uh, what happened? Or yeah, what? like what happened? You just decided to not do it. So yeah, I hated it. I was literally just like, it was to the point where I was like, I would get up and I was like, I don't want to go to this class because this teacher, I had one teacher that I genuinely liked. Yeah. His name was Ed Petrosky and he was the fucking man. Yeah. And he was sick. But every other teacher I had, it was like, and I talked about this on, on Dude's podcast. It was just like, they would be, one teacher would be like, yeah, this is sick. And the other one would be like, nah. Like yeah, they that, contradicted themselves. It's just like, yeah, they contradicted themselves, and it's like, art is subjective. Like, you can't tell me that I did something wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... Fuck yeah, exactly. So, so it's like, I, I'm paying for you to tell me that I'm doing what I like to do wrong. Yeah, but you're just, you're in a classroom, and you're catering that classroom to art that you favor. Yeah. It's like, like the t- that's what the teacher favors. Yeah, and it's like, don't don't make me go out and walk around Pittsburgh and fucking take pictures not looking through the viewfinder. Like that was one of the assignments. It was like, walk around and just hold your camera at your chest and take pictures. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Like, that's so stupid. Like, can, can you teach me like, like business aspects of photography, like copywriting? Can you teach me like anything that I will actually need? Yeah. Can you teach us how to like 
just like literally never, anything to use. I never got, and if there was those classes, I never got to them because like <laughs> they filled me with horse shit that I couldn't like test out of that I like because I I came from. It wasn't like I just came into the art institute like like a fresh virgin. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I like I had never touched a camera before, which is how they treated pretty much anybody that walked in there. Yeah. It was like, oh, you're coming here to do graphic design? Cool, take this computer literacy class. Like, oh, you're coming to paint? Cool, take this color theory class. It's like people already did all of this stuff. Yeah, like, that's a I good point. Take, it, and it's like, I, and they wouldn't let me test out of it. Like, I had to take a computer literacy class. A computer yeah. literacy class. That's, I've been using a computer since I was in second grade. Probably better than half the people that are instructing it. It, it was insane, man. And I, like, I was like, I went to my uh, student advisor. I was like, I don't want to. I was like, I, I can I test out of this class? Like, I don't, I, I don't need to be in this class. Like, I'm paying three grand for to be taught how to use this computer that I own. I don't even need. Yeah, to, it's just like, a waste. Know, yeah, you're just fucking wasting and time like, no, and money. You, you can't test out of it. I was like, why? Well, so, that's why I closed down. That's yeah, why I, that's why. So, I could and they the were bed. laundering money and whatnot. They were doing a bunch of shady shit. Never, I've never once heard a, ben- uh, a beneficial, uh, or I never once heard a compliment about the artists. I see, I. I knew a couple people like my, my roommate graduated and he was, he went for graphic design and like he was good to begin with. Like he yeah. was really tight before he even went there. So all to me, all he went there for was a piece of paper. Yeah. Like just, that's just, yeah. And that's bullshit. Culinary. That I know that. a couple people that graduated culinary there and the one liked it. The one, not so much. The one works, I think is like a head chef at, uh, What's that other casino? Meadows. The Meadows. Yeah, they're yeah. like the, the steakhouse at the Meadows. Oh, uh, okay. So, so, so like after you leave the art institute, like, like what was what were you doing then? I was <laughs> not doing much. Um, I was like shooting weddings, and I was so at the time I was. I'm trying to think if it was when I was still living down. So I think it was after I'd already. Yeah, it was after. So probably like 2010, 2009 or 10. Um, you know Ricky P? Yeah. So he had a studio space downtown in the Diamond Building. Okay. Um, right by Market Square. And I've known him for years because he used to be in like a band that like Wyatt and them used to play with. Really? In high school. Yeah, he was a drummer. He played drums. He played bass. What kind of band? Scars of Arson is a, it was the band name. That band name. It was a metal band. Oh, really? Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, about if you that. listen to his, if you listen to his beats now, a lot of his drums and shit are like very like he puts a lot of double bass sometimes, like secretly, like in his really. Beats. Yeah, he has. A, <laughs> that's where a lot of his drumming. That's shit comes crazy. From. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. So he, um, man, I'd known because he went to Shaler's and I went to Fox Chapel. So like, oh, we, yeah, it was, was like. Right you know, next to him. And yeah, he knew he knew Ben and like everybody. So he had this studio space and I was like I was like, yo, like I got I was like I got this camera. I was like right when I got my new camera, I was like, I got this camera. I was yeah. like, should so That's good. I was um <laughs> That I was just going down there, like chilling with him, like just taking photos, and that's I met this dude, um, Fats Joey Fats. He's yeah, like, um, yeah, I know he is. Yeah, super super tight uh, rapper, Pittsburgh rapper. Uh, met him. I was doing like some photos and stuff for him. I did like a video for him. I did a video for uh, Tolly. Yeah, I remember um, Tolly too. I think I did like Tolly. It was like my first video slash like Tolly's first video. So it was like. Not very good. Let's see how these you go. Know, not very good. I did. A, Were you nervous a, when you did that video? A little bit, just because I was like, I don't know what this is gonna look like. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it, it got to be like crazy. Yeah. Your first time doing it, and like yeah. kind of like like de- like developing it after that. And then I did one for. Uh, I did a couple of random little ones for Tali because he was recording with with Ricky P. Yeah. down there, and then I did one uh, for this dude Beans, um, my homie at this like barber shop it was really funny we were like in the hood at this barber shop at like 11 at night and he was like bro he's like we're just gonna film this quick little he did this like uh little song over like the Pac, like picture me rolling beat yeah and it was just like it was just like a minute and a half we just like were in this like barber shop and it was so cut up um and that was like the second video i ever did but yeah so i was just down there like doing videos like taking pictures 
and just like getting your name out there and yeah, shit. and like that was so that was like right around the time I went and shot the like whiz because like that's how I got into that whole like music scene. I was just like down there with like Ricky P and like I think Chevy was down there one day and. So I was like, I'm going to go pull up to this Wiz shoot. Yeah. So I like went and I shot that. And it was just like, it just kind of like one, you know, like one thing stemmed to another. Yeah, and then it was like all I was, just timing. Yeah. And like I was just like shooting whatever I could. And then um, Ian hit me up, Rex Arrow. Oh, okay. So I had met him through Will um, Calson who is, he was, like, at the time, he was, like, doing, like, merch and, like, day-to-day stuff for, like, Mac. Okay. Um, so he hit me up. I met him through, because he, he was also, I think, managing Tolly at the time. That might have been it. It was, yeah. like, something like that. Like, I met him through Tolly. So, so you, you knew, of, like, you were still, you were in that world and shit like that with uh, with Ricky P and everything before Mac even came into it? hmm Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, Ricky P was, like, the, that was, like, my like just being uh, like a because he was also making his name for himself like, yeah for time, sure you know what i mean so he was this is 2000 when 2009 like 10 or, oh shit yeah, so Wiz was, was popping off right around 2000 Wiz was still yeah this was like right when um just like right as cushion orange juice was yeah, coming cause, out because that kind of uh, in black and yellow hadn't yeah. come out yet so this was like when i was down like 2009 2010 it's like right when like wiz was doing like the like cushion orange juice stuff yeah so that was all like um because they were doing videos for um they did like the kid frankie video yeah they did the mesmerized video mesmerized, they yeah. did um in the cut in the cut with the pool. Yeah, I just remember like I was watching all these videos. And I was like, these videos are so fucking sick. I was like, these are these are. Who sick. was filming them? Those were all like Bill. Those were all those cushion orange juice videos were uh, Bill Palladino. Oh shit! Yeah. Huh. Wow. Yeah, it was like a it was, so it was like Bill and then his brother Frank took over for a little bit. Yeah. And then yeah, it was like a it was just like a progression, um, but I, yeah, the, all of those were I was just they were so sick and i was like I, that's th- that was like another thing i was like i want to fucking shoot shit like this like this is sick because he was like shooting it on a fucking like slr like i was like he was i was like, yeah so showing was, you like, that I, it was possible yeah I, was like, I can fucking do that i was like that's so sick and like my other homie dave uh prokopak like he he lives in new york now but he was like doing second camera and shit on there and he he's also really really dope like he's a really really tight videographer um Yes, so all of that going on, and then I met Will through, like, Tolly. Will introduced me to Ian. Ian asked me to go. He was, like, out of town. He was like, you should go film some B-roll for this this dude. Do you know Grimes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, you're from out that way. Yeah, so, yeah Grimes. You know Grimes. I so I, he was like... About to have a blowout. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what video it was, but he was like, he's like, I need you to go to the club and like film some B-roll for what this club? Grimes video. It, man, it was in the strip. I don't know what... Uh, I don't remember what club it was, but I was the only white dude in there. I bet. And I it bet. was uh, it was so cut up. Like I, It was like so dark. I, like I, I was like, how am I going to film this? Like there's, there's like no lights in here. So like yeah. it was literally, <laughs> I was, I gave him the footage and I was like, I'm sorry if it's not that good. I was like, it was kind of like dark. Like the only lights in there were like the lights when they brought out the bottles. Yeah. It's like, it was just like the <laughs> bottles were lit up and I was like, I got some stuff and he was like, perfect. It was like, it's enough. I was like, cool. Um, so like, that's how I met Ian. And then he asked me at one point to come help him on the knock knock video shoot. Which oh yeah, like, that was like the first time that I met uh, Mac and. Now that was like, would you say that was like? Uh, I mean, he was already like kind of. I remember whenever kids dropped, and yeah. I remember whenever kids dropped. I was working at Bowser, and uh, Mac was on Mikey and Big Bob, and he did that interview, and I just remember listening to that tape, thinking like, "Damn, like this is crazy!" Like the, the like Nike, like kicks on my feet and everything like that. And like Kool-Aid and frozen pizza. I remember just watching the music videos and thinking like, damn, like this shit is wild. And I mean, like that was probably right whenever it first started, like 
you know, catching on fire, right? Mm-hmm. It's like all the kids stuff. Yeah. I mean, he had, he had, had a little bit of buzz from the uh, the jukebox. Like, he had, like, the, and I think the High Life was before that, too. Yeah. Um, but, like, kids was the one that, that definitely, like, set it off. And that Knock Knock video was, like, a, that was, like, a bigger video, like. It, yeah. It, I mean, we, there was a lot of. A lot. I think there's like a lot of extras and a lot of stuff that went into that one. Because that was like the Katie wasn't Katie Smokes Hydro. Yeah, yeah, she What's, was in it. Yeah, and like Katie Malice. Yeah, yeah Katie Malice. I never knew her last name. Out there. <laughs> you just know people by their fucking Instagram yep. name. It's terrible. Uh, but I remember like uh, my boy Rob and Zach were like they wanted skateboarders and like I remember them went yeah, down. Yep. I remember the girl Zoe we know was like in the video as well and like I remember thinking like uh that video was like it looked like it was like a higher like higher quality video yeah and he just started like putting shit out after that and it kind of and like you kind of just like that was your first meeting of him um i want to say that that was i think so i think that was the first time i met him was on the knock knock shoot and what were you doing there i was doing like like b-roll second camera for ian like he was just asked me to come like film like just b-roll shit so like I I I was it was a good like around that time like I was doing a lot of stuff that's when I started doing a lot of stuff with Ian like I was doing and it's all like coming back to me man I don't, and it's so weird because I can't like I can't pinpoint like the exact timeline because I know I was doing a lot of stuff with like the fifty eights and I was doing like that's also how I kind of got into that like meeting of like Mac and like all of that were cause I was doing, that was like when the 58s were still like, like everybody. Insane. It was like Vinny and Fran and, yeah. and Vils and ghosty and, and, um, be white and Mayo, Mayo and all that. And Tom duck. Like it was everybody. And I was yeah, like, that was like the, that was like the prime of like yeah. when, when they were putting out all their shit. Yeah. So like I was, I, I, I helped Ian with a couple like, uh, 58s videos. The I realness, him, the realness I helped him with. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was a cool video. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, mean downtown yeah. McKee Sport. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Super mean. Um, that was really cool. And then I I remember I shot like a B White did like a freestyle and on the old ID it was like him and Tom Doug. I remember that too. And um, that freestyle was awesome. <laughs> it was, he just he went was, on for so long. Yeah, it was like eight minutes. He yeah. was wearing a red fifty eight shirt. Yeah, it was, I remember just, that. I remember all them fucking videos. Yeah, man. That I, I remember. I feel like uh, one of them had like this fire bar. I have to go back and watch it. I just remember one of them was like, "I'll save." They said like, "I'll save the city." Call me Mario Lemieux, and it was like the the hardest bar to me at the time because it he, was like right after he won the cup, and I was like, "That's so hard." Telling you, like he's one of the illest ever. Oh, I know. He's so tight. <laughs> yeah, he's so tight. But it's like you started like that, like they, uh, it's weird because like all them dudes in the 58s, like they were all like respected mm. by everyone. By themselves. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, yeah. everyone like, uh, showed them respect and shit like that. Like they had that, uh, I remember listening to, uh, cause I obviously knew about them before I even knew about Mac Miller. And, uh, I listened to Mary Jane and they had a Mac feature on there and I was like, Oh fuck. Like it, right after Mac, like started blowing up with like kids. Yeah. I remember thinking like, Holy shit. Like he's on one of their songs. And I was like, damn, this is such a small world. And then like, I remember seeing a picture of Mac in like a 58 hoodie because like, that's whenever like he kind of, once kids went on, like from an outsider's perspective, he just like kept climbing yeah. the hill and it just never stopped. And uh, I remember seeing, like, a 58s post with him, and, like, you're just like, damn, like, he's showing them dudes respect, and, like, that was dope to me. Yeah. I thought that was crazy. Yeah, he had he had B. White. He had a couple of them come out to, like, do shows. Like, they, I think they went one in New York. Show. Yeah, New York. Yeah, I remember they that. One in Erie. I think they did it a few. That's dope for sure. Mm-hmm. And, like, you were doing – so you, like, trying to just, like, spread your name around this, like, Pittsburgh, like, scene of music. Uh, like, in the beginning – for someone new, is it difficult to do, or is it just? I feel like that, like uh, people just are willing to work with anyone that are willing to work with them. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like now it's it's harder. I feel like now there's like an oversaturation of of people. Not not that it's a bad thing. Yeah, but it's like there are so many like photographers. Yeah, anyone just picks up a camera and puts photographer on their Instagram profile. There's there's a lot, man. So it's like at that time. 
there weren't really that many. Yeah. You know, so it was like, it was a little bit easier. Cause like I said, like I was at the black and yellow shoot. I was the only buddy there, or only person there with a, with a camera. And if that pictures. happened now, bro, there would be thousands, 15, 20 easy. Like, plus if you think about it back then, it's like, we didn't have good cameras on our phones. Yeah. So like people weren't taking, like they didn't have a reason to take photos on their phone. Yeah, all the like time. People were taking photos for Instagram. Yeah. This wasn't that's, a thing yet. Man, that's a wild, that's a wild thing to think about. Like, I guess like in high school, whenever we had like phones that were taking trash photos, people weren't, so like they were going a, on MySpace. That yeah, they were it. they were they weren't so in a rush to like mm-hmm. take a photo and document it and put it on Instagram right away because it was more of a process to, to take do. your take your photo because like mad people didn't even put that much shit on Inst- on MySpace from their phones. I remember mm-hmm. like I used like a digital a camera. digital camera yeah. whack ass digital camera. Everybody did, and it was uh, I remember buying an Enjoy shirt with uh, some Globe shoes. <laughs> And I remember uh, it was a Kennywood fit. And I remember getting a pick on this digital camera before Kennywood, like, about to kill all these boys. The Kennywood there. fit. The Kennywood fit. Is a cla- Man, that's where you went and flexed the fits. Every but that's, time. That's, like, the only time I feel like you would put, like, a, a cell phone pick up on, like, MySpace would be if you had the sidekick and you were like, I'm going to flex the sidekick pick. And yeah, you, you get that blue, <laughs> that blue hue to it. And you'd be like, yeah, he took that on the sidekick. For sure. <laughs> So you started to like uh, adapt all this. Like, I mean, after the knock knock video, you kind of were just always around. No. Um, so I helped on the knock knock video. There was like another video. I think I helped on. Um, maybe not though. I know I did the knock knock and then. So I'm just like really trying to remember the timeline. Cause it's, it's, I get that it's hard. It's a little hazy. A little hazy. Uh, but the, I... So, e, at the time... at that Around that time, there was like... Ian was moving to New York because he lived in... He lived here, but he was moving to New York. Yeah. And this was like going into... I want to say this was 2011 that this was happening. That... He was moving to New York. Mac was going into the studio to record. At ID? Yeah, at Blue Slide Park. Oh, so okay, this was yeah. like, he was about to do his first, like, his first full length, like, album. And Ian was like, you should go, you should just go and, like, and film it. Like, just, he's like, I'm not going to be able to be there. He's like, you should go. And, like, I had gone and filmed a couple of things before. I remember I went and filmed him perform at Alderdice's senior prom. Yeah. Like, a year after he graduated. Like, he was performing. That's crazy. At, the, at their senior prom. And he was, like, it was just, like, a really weird. Surreal thing. It, like. it was, like, it was what well, was weird for him because it was, like, he went to school with some of these people. Like, he knows some of these people. And he's yeah. just about to, like, go up. And it, it, he hadn't. It was all still kind of new too, so it wasn't like he was, uh, like just like fuck it, like I'm gonna go. It was like this is gonna be a little weird. Like I, I don't, I don't it, know if he really necessarily wanted to do that one. I bet it would be weird. I mean, if you're going to school with people, I mean, like I don't know. I'm sure that, uh, like, like did did he ever talk about like getting hate in the beginning? Like I'm sure he got some hate and shit like that from people in school. I'm sure he did. He never really talked about it with me. Everyone, everyone does. Like uh, no matter what you do, even in, like. Even if you're, you know, you're a good photographer, like, I'm sure you still get, like, negative, like, negative feedback. Everyone has to deal with negative feedback. Oh, there's always people that, that are going to be negative. I got salty whenever I got this one-star review on the podcast. I was like, who the fuck gave me one star? Like, why? It's, like, just, it's just haters being haters, man. That's just, like, the way people are. Haters being haters, for sure. It's, it's just, like, I want to do this to troll, so, like, as... It's how people are. It's yeah. fucked up that that's somehow it's how some people are. They just want. It's like, fucked up. It's like they want to go out of their way to make other people feel shitty. Yeah. But it's like fuck. Just fuck Absolutely. Up. It's like I'd rather not. I'd rather not feel bad and just like be like that dude just probably lives such a sad life. Yeah. I mean, like, it doesn't get to me too too much. But you uh, you film that and then you filmed like other small shit for him. Like in the beginning, like like uh, were you w- like was it. You were talking about how there's not too many like photographers back then. Like, was he to the point where like random for people were not just like going and chilling like in his studio sessions? Yeah, no, no. It was like, it was like 
you know, uh, me, him, Tree J, Jimmy, Q, Will. Like uh, that was like the. Yeah, it's a weird. It's weird to think about the timeline of it. Of like, of like how, like if shit's like, because I don't know how it is like in the music scene. Like some people, who knows? Like some people could just have people rolling in and out. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of people do, but I know most people like to keep it pretty, pretty chill. But at those times, like it was also like. Yeah, I'm at the studio. Like, come, you know, like I know people that are like that. Like, come pull up. Like, yeah, I don't want to just like pull up to a studio and just sit there and yeah, contribute nothing. I mean, if I'm there to take pictures or whatever, that's cool. But I don't want to be like one of those people that just shows up to the studio, just sitting there. sits there, smokes their weed, and <laughs> and fucking like leaves. Like, yeah. <laughs> Just, just like a, just a mold. Yeah, just like just a fucking <laughs> fly on the wall. There, like I don't want to. It's not fun to me. So that's understandable. But and, yeah, and I, I uh, so I did like that. I filmed him like that whole summer. I think it was. I don't remember when we went to. I think I think we went to Milwaukee before then. I think was like so. I went to like he played the rave in Milwaukee, which is like pretty huge venue yeah like really sick venue too and he sold it out and this was like it was like the biggest room he had ever sold out at the time so um he called tree j and i was with tree j and bill i think and we were doing some goofy video we felt oh we felt bill hit three thousand followers on instagram or on twitter so we smoked an ounce and filmed it and that was like one of the high eyes videos. That, oh, I remember that watching you, yeah, that. Yeah, that, the high that, eyes. That's what I was so ask. weird. It was because that video, that video has so many views. It doesn't make any sense to me. I remember that. Yeah, Ian's just had that. Uh, Ian's had, there was a grinder. Ian's was mm-hmm. grinding up that mountain of shit. Yeah. And uh, I remember watching all them videos. Like Tree J had that long ass, uh, that long ass volcano ball, bag. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was. <laughs> I that remember all that wild. stuff. Yeah, that was like a 10-foot <laughs> volcano bag. Yeah, he was on like the second floor of the house. <laughs> Hitting it, bro. Yeah, dude, I remember that. That shit was crazy. Those were wild videos. I forgot about that until now. Yeah. Huh. And uh, so so where does like the homegrown guys come in with all this? Like, how did you link in with them? So. Because like, I, obviously, like uh, I just saw on your Instagram, you were fucking with Dope is Yola. Mm-hmm. And that dude, I remember seeing him on Instagram like, you know, probably like five years ago, six mm-hmm. years ago. Just like, and he's just like some happy dude that's just smoking, dude, smoking weed on Instagram. He's such, he's such a good guy. He's such a nice fucking guy. And he always got like, he's always just gets mad love. Like he started making a clothing brand and you just like, it was easy to show like respect for that dude. Yeah. Like he's just a hustler out there yeah. getting it. Yeah, he's a good dude. He, um, so... I linked up with the homegrown dudes, so it'll, it'll all come. So okay, so from the Fifty Eights, Fran and Vinny knew. Fran was friends with um, AV. Yeah. Fran and Vinny were both friends with AV. Uh, okay, yeah. So I met AV through them. All right. And then through AV, I met Charles and Lazy, and um, and then when I when I went to I went to the Cup with them, I think in two thousand and thirteen in denver with um charles and an av and homegrown and that's yeah. that's i think where i met um tom dope Yola, thomas uh, his name's thomas yeah i had no idea yeah, yeah i just yeah. know him from his instagram yeah no he's he's a really good dude man really, that dude really good always dude. gets uh like i always see his pages and shit get taken down and everything mm-hmm. like that and it's like he's just like a he's a goofy guy that just makes like goofy videos like yeah it's just like let it he's, be he, he just gets like i don't know why people hate on him man he's just such a like positive dude like i don't yeah positivity like you see just, positive like, re- shit report his page all the time so he's like he recently switched over to youtube that's like his new he was like i'm gonna just go to youtube because instagram keeps deleting me uh, so okay. he went to youtube yeah and he, bro he just i mean he had, he had a youtube but he wasn't like actively using it but yeah since like he started actively shit. using it in like january i want to say maybe january february he's already at like half a million subscribers. Really? So yeah he's crushing it bro damn that's definitely crazy because mm-hmm. like i mean y- you like you seem to know a good amount of people like like just weird ass people yeah. that are like uh that do like crazy shit and i'm sure like with you tra- like you traveled all over the world right yeah been been some places like what's your favorite place you've been to so far man that's one of my one of the hardest questions i get asked um 
South Africa was really cool. Jesus. Like Cape Town was. What's a plane ride over there? Fuck, man. The worst plane ride of my life. I bet it was. How long? Uh, on the way there, it was 16 and a half hours. Oh, and on the way back, it was, it was 18 and a half because we stopped. Like I don't even know where we stopped. We stopped somewhere in South Africa. But, okay, so the way there, the 16 and a half hours the way there, we flew South African Airways, which, fuck, man. Worst airline I've ever been, which I thought was the worst airline I've ever been on. <laughs> so it was like the seating was th- three seats. Four seats, three seats. Yeah. But the fucking rows were so tight, bro. And I'm a tall dude. Like, yeah. I'm 6'4". Okay. And I already hate flying like yeah. as it is because I'm Fuck so tall. That. And I'm like 16 and a half hours, man. I need like an exit row. I need something. I am just, I'm the fourth seat in, so I'm in the middle, but I'm not like in the middle of the, like I'm in the middle section, but I'm yeah. on the aisle. Okay. And as soon as I sit down, like my knees are already... Oh. Like I, I get, I sit down on my knees or up against the seat in front of me Fuck and I'm that. like, this is going to be awful dude in front of me puts his seat back oh. 10 minutes into the flight. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I was immediately, I hit the like call steward a spot and I was like, I need a red wine and I need them every 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm pounding. I drank 11 of those little bottles of red wine. And I'm Fuck walking that. around the plane, bro, because I'm like, I can't sit here. I'm walking around what the plane. What do you do on a sixteen hour flight? Like I was watching I was trying to watch movies, but like I was just so uncomfortable sitting there. Yeah. Like I mean, I, I was okay for a couple hours, but then after a while I'm just like Yeah, dude, I hate it. It's like, bro, like this is like they're just I there's nowhere for me to put my leg. Like it's just crazy. Yeah, it's the worst. So I walked back to our uh, lighting guy, Mike, who was just like in the he had like a fucking nice seat like he was somehow like cheated the system like there was like this seat in the back like as the plane got smaller toward the back the seats get less so it was like uh two okay, seats, there's more space. one seat so yeah. he had like this one seat that he could like put his legs through this little secret uh that's and he was like he's like bro you should have changed your seat he's like i moved it right before we boarded i was like why didn't you tell me you that's fucker. fucked up but on the way back um I got first class. Oh, yeah. And it was fucking... Jeez. It was a whole different... Fl- I didn't want to get off the plane, man. It was crazy. Like, what's the deal with, like... Uh, like, you're flying everywhere all the time. Yeah. Like, you, you guys are flying, like, how often during the week? Uh, I mean, it depends where, where we're going. Because, like... So, so you were... You were like his photographer. Like, was there other photographers there? You were you were traveling with him everywhere, correct? Yeah, yeah it was... It, now, you, if you're flying on these planes everywhere, like... And you hate flying. Like, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, I just got used to it, man. Fuck. I just like, had to get used to like it. Like, multiple times a week, though. Yeah. Oh, bro. There was, when we were in Europe um, for the festival run, it was, that shit was. Un- Dude, isn't it shows like every day? Bro, it shows every day and it's in a different country every day. So it's like you do a show and then you wake up at like four in the morning and you fly to another fucking place. Oh. And like some days you get off the plane and you drive an hour and a half right to another show day. Or maybe you get that lucky day where you get an off day, but like on your off day, you probably have to fly. Yeah. So it's like and get somewhere else. Yeah. So it, it was, that shit was exhausting, man. Cause it was just a lot. It was just a lot of shows and not a lot of time and a lot of flights. And yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a flying fan just because I'm so fucking tall. Yeah, I mean like no one fuck that. That would be the worst. Um so I'm sure like traveling around with like I mean a pretty big a pretty big uh I mean celebrity, you gotta call him a celebrity. Yeah. You, you you see uh you see things, you, you go different places and uh like what's like uh what's like the coolest experience that you've had with meeting someone that uh Someone random, like I'm sure you've met random people. Hmm. Like you got to be big. Like I remember asking Germ that, and he was like, "Juicy J, hundred percent." Yeah, <laughs> first time I met Juicy was was awesome. <laughs> like, like that's just nuts. Yeah, I, we, <laughs> we uh, we sh- why did we we shot like a we shot the lucky ass bitch video in L.A. Never came out, but that was when I met Juicy for the first time, and yeah, he's a he's a a trip man he's a funny ass dude yeah yeah like he's he's a good dude um 
I think it's interesting. Uh, you like you said that you like uh, being like a candid, like like you're always like you always get photos of like people don't even know that they're there. I think that was like what you were saying in that podcast. Like yeah. you try to like be invisible, mm. and you don't want to be like there at all. You don't want to be uh, known you're there. Right. And uh, like like what's like where do you take like like like, where do you take that from? Because, like, there's other people that are photographers that are like, oh, do something crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and there's people, like, holding their chains or whatever like that. It's like, how do you develop, like, your style? Like, where do you get that from? Um, Honestly, it was... It, it probably came from just, like, shooting with Mac and, like, like Ricky P. Just because I would be in there... And it would be to the point where there would be, like, especially with Ricky P, it would be to the point where there would be so many people in the studio. Yeah. Motherfuckers wouldn't even realize that I was in there. You know uh, what I mean? Because it would just be, like, they would all just be, like, around the fucking computer or yeah. the monitors or smoking or whatever. And I was just tucked back in the corner. And, like, the same with Mac. Like, I would just try to be out of the way because that's how I wanted to film or, like, shoot it at the time. It was just, like, I want to capture everything in its just like as it's happening yeah so that was just always like the way that i shot stuff so it just kind of became the way that i always ended up doing it i don't know now is it like uh is it like is it part of your job to like be available whenever you know he would want things to be you know photographed like are you just like what i don't understand whenever i see photos is like are you just like chilling and just like you'll pull out a camera and take a photo or is it like is it like you're always supposed to be like taking photos like i don't understand it it was it was different with him i don't know um it got to the point where i could just i didn't always have to have my camera out but i i i'd have it like close by if i didn't have it out yeah um but there were some times where it would be like, let's let's just take a picture, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But I tried to, for, if we were going somewhere, like if we were going to do something, I would, for the most part, try to have it just like out ready. Now, like 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 being a photographer of someone, uh, like, like, like we said, a celebrity, like are, are you, is it like conscious of like always having to like produce content for like Instagram pages and shit like that? Like, like, are you conscious where you're just like always like, like, yo, I got this photo and like, you're just like sending it to like whichever person you're taking a picture of. I, yeah. I mean, I, I always, I always do. Cause I mean, that's also another good way for me to, to get my name. It's like, it's like, I want to send them as much as I can. So if like they want to post it, it's like, that's just good for me. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense for sure. Cause like, I always think about like, like I look at like uh, art like us mm-hmm. and like he, like he takes photos of like, like fabulous and shit like that. And like, I always wonder like if he's just like taking these photos, he's just like constantly, like, you're just constantly like sending them and mm-hmm. like they're just, they're just choosing whatever they want. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's either that or like, I'll just send them a folder or like I'll post them and tag them. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. like that's, that's what I did. Like, uh, I just did that for like Thundercat. Like, I just when yeah. he was here, like I just sent him. Like, he's like he's he's a different type of dude. That like, he doesn't like to really post uh, photos of himself. Like the Thundercat, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's just like, I think he just recently made an Instagram because for, like for this tour, I think they wanted to have something to. He's just been putting out like goofy like videos on yeah, there. Yeah, I, I saw his Instagram. Yeah, like, it's just it's, like a bizarre. Type. Yeah, it's a, it's a that's what he wants. He just he's wants out it there. to be just like a fucking experience on Instagram. So he's not much about like photos of himself. Like he he really uh, like likes them. Like he he would rather just have them for himself to enjoy. Essentially, like, yeah. I for sent sure. him a folder and he was like he was like man these are he's these are great. He's like thank you so much for these. Like he was really like. You know, he's he's a really nice, really nice guy. Love yeah. that dude. Like, uh, so for you, uh, like, what's your move with like what you want to do now? As far as like taking photos, like, like how do you find, like, how do you find people to take photos of? Do you just like hit them up and be like, yo, like, like, uh, like, like talking about like getting like photo passes and shit like that? Yeah, sometimes. Like, um, well, that's what I do. Like, I mean, I. If I know them, like uh, like I know I know Thundercat, so I just texted him. I was like, yeah, I, I was like, I want to come. But I mean, like new up. people, like if people I, you don't like know or anything like that. I'll try to. If I don't know them, I'll either if I'm trying to do it, I'll um, 
I'll like DM them or I'll try to like get in touch with their management if they have them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's like a, just a different process. Yeah. But my, um, I don't know. I got a, I got a couple things. I'm trying to do some like food photography right now. Uh, trying to, my, my buddy has like a nice little setup out in Vegas. Um, he does, he shoots for like the, poker central i believe oh really yeah that would so be crazy i was supposed to go out there i was supposed to be out there right now actually um but i couldn't do it because i'm going on vacation but he wanted me to come out there to shoot the world series of poker oh wow yeah it, was, it would have been like a month and a half but he was like he me and him have been trying to like do this for a couple years but he like finally is able to like have a team essentially like he's able to like bring other people on to help him yeah so i think i'm gonna probably do something with him in the near future and like do some poker stuff i don't know just something that would be dope yeah just something that would be dope i love like the vibe of a casino yeah like uh i love all that like that whole uh and especially like poker that's like right up my alley for like because they're not focused on me yeah. And like I can get like that that's when you really get some good like fucking just like photos of like them being some Yeah, just really it. good emotion like on yeah. like cuz there you'll see some wild emotion on a poker like a poker tournament man like ups all types of ups and downs <laughs> like it's, it's chicken change in a half a second that's sickening. one card one card yeah. sickening um now uh as far as like you having an Instagram like you're a photographer you're a photographer like uh your job is to take photographs and your main tool, I would say, is Instagram, correct? Yeah. I feel like Instagram is more important than even people's, like, websites. Yeah, because, honestly, I feel like people don't go to websites They anymore. don't. I'm like, telling you, they pe- don't. People's attention spans are just... Goldfish. Yeah, man. It's So it's like you need something flashy and catchy and instant instant grabber on instagram like it's absolutely like it, it that's to, a, that's that's where it goes to yeah like anytime i hear someone uh to talk to on here like i'll automatically go to their instagram and i'll automatically like that's how things are gauged now mm-hmm. and it's it's fucked up that it that's is. the truth but it's, that's how things are gauged so like as far as like you being like uh like like you don't post a lot of photos of yourself like mm-hmm. you i just like a lot of other photographers, like yeah. it's it's rare to see a photographer post, you know, be that dude that's posting a bunch of like portraits of themselves and shit. Yep. But uh, it's like, how conscious are you? How conscious are you of like your Instagram and things like that? Of like what to post, like following a template, like you know what I mean? I follow no template, no uh, nothing. That's I good. um, I hate Instagram, man. If wow. I didn't, I just hate it. I hate, oh, I just hate it. I don't know. Like, I, If I didn't have to have it for what I do, like yeah. I wouldn't have one. You, I, I 100% wouldn't have one. You don't use other social media? Not really. I have a Twitter. I don't really, I go, I go on it for, for news, honestly. Yeah. Like it's, I'll go on it to see, like if something happens, I'll just be like, I'll just go search that keyword and uh, just see what motherfuckers are talking about. Like. Yeah, that makes sense. It's the quickest way, like I can find about anything. Because like if nowadays, like if anybody's bitching about something, they're doing it on Twitter. So if something happens, like if there's a fucking accident on twenty eight, I could just go on Twitter and be like twenty eight accident. Some motherfuckers be like, oh, it's goddamn yeah. backed up all the way down here to Melville for the I next twenty seven right? miles. So it's like <laughs> literally, like there's always somebody bitching about something on Twitter. So if I use it for the news or like if I need to find anything out, I don't really. I don't really tweet that much. You're not a social butterfly. No, not it's understandable. Really. I mean, I like, and I, I, cause I just I hate going on my phone. Like, I hate that I that I go on my phone and I'm like, I gotta go look on Instagram, and it's like that's like the first thing I do, and it's like first I don't, thing whenever you wake up. Yeah, it's like I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's it's terrible. We're like addicted. They they might as well just be tied to our hands. Yeah, but uh, it's interesting how like uh, you know if you're. It's just interesting how people think about shit and how uh, how shit came to be. Yeah, it's uh, it's wild, definitely wild. All right, um, so we'll go to the ending segment of this podcast. Uh, mm. Every podcast I do an ending segment called Desert Island Questions. <laughs> Each guest three categories to take with them on a desert island. So uh, the first category is things to watch on a desert island. Things to watch. Yeah. See, I, I, I thought about this 
beforehand. This, but for, yeah, but I, I'm not going to lie to you. I forgot. That's all right. Because, you know. That's all right. Things to watch. All right. And, and you said it can, it can be, be series, anything. right? Yeah, it can anything. be whole series. Whole series, whatever. Man. So, ah, fuck. So I think I have to do The Office. All of The Office. Yeah. Um, man. All of the Harry Potter. Whole, whole Harry Potter. I'm a Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter. Yeah, I love it. So good. And now this is where it gets hard. Because, like, I want to pick, like, a a great, like, animated show. Like, I want to pick, like, The Simpsons. Kind of want to pick Rick and Morty. Simpsons Got South Park trash. up there. You don't like The Simpsons? Absolutely I like trash. the first seven seasons of The Simpsons. Great television. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> I feel like that it's just, like... I don't know, dude. I can't even. I can't even get into it whatsoever. Really? Never. I mean, South I Park also up there. Yeah, South Park's great. That's all right. I'll I'll, I'll give you two then. Choose your favorite two. Ah oh, man. Well, I think I would have to go. I, I think I'd go Rick and Morty, and then I kind of want to pick like a goofy like Adam Sandler movie. And yeah. I just saw that you watched Heavyweights last night. I did. Oh, man, that might be up there because I love that movie. So good. It's like one of my favorites. That's probably Ben Stiller's best movie. It's his best role. It's like that. 100%. It's, oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's literally, it is his best role. It's so good. Meet the Parents is good too, but like. It's a different time. It's a different time, but like Ben Stiller and Heavyweights, you can't beat that. Yeah. Ben Stiller. Tony Perkins. Oh, man. That is a that's a good movie. I'm that's, feeling skinny, Tony. It's a it's a great movie. I love that. I might just put that on there. Yeah, I'm gonna just go heavyweights because that's I, right. I love that movie. That's good. Yeah. Um, Honorable mention to basketball. Uh, that's good too. <laughs> Zed's just posted a jersey of basketball. I have it on ice, bro. It's locked. I hit him. I was like, bro, I need that jersey. Oh, you're getting that one? Facts. <laughs> I had to. I was like, that's so hard. Too good. Yeah, I was like, I need that. Um. All right. Uh. The third or the second category is you read ever? Very little. All right. What about video games? I know you're a video you know game I'm guy. a gamer. So pick three favorite video games. Three favorite video games. <sighs> gotta go. Gotta go with the Dark Souls. First Dark Souls. Yeah. Gotta go. Am I alone on the desert island? Yeah. Damn. So I can't bring Golden Eye. It's not going to be very fun. Not fun at all. <laughs> um. Hmm. There's two. All right. I'll go. I'll go the first Mario, classic Mario, NES. And then I need like a solid. Somewhere in the in between here. Let's go No Mercy N64. All right. That's good. Yeah. Those are good. Um, all right. Third category is things to listen to. Things to listen to. Yeah. Whatever you want. I want all of the now. That's what I call music's volume <laughs> one through 67. <laughs> that's a good answer. <laughs> that's a really good answer. Uh, I actually do want that whole collection because I guarantee you it'd be pretty great to listen to. Yeah. All that, all that together. That yeah. would be good. That's a really good answer. Um, so I'm gonna throw that one up there, and then man, I'm such a like weirdo when it comes to music. I really, oh, man. So him. Love metal, <laughs> I love that whole album. Brother. We went, we went to, uh, we went to D's for uh, my buddy's birthday the other night, and we were looking at the jukebox, yeah. and it was, uh, what was the first? The first band was like it played Broken by like Evanescence and <laughs> Seether, and then, uh, then the next song was him, uh, Wings of a Butterfly. <laughs> oh man, and then. There was oh, it was just such a funny, and then Toby Keith. It oh, was yeah. uh, what, a, what a clash uh, of genres God. there. Yeah, I love this bar. 
it was just such a ridiculous and you're just like that's definitely D's it's just like that's the, D's 100% in a percent, yeah. 100% D's in a nutshell yeah hilarious um, that's good though and uh, man probably take swimming with me it's understandable it's a good one it's a very very good one it's definitely uh I mean, I feel like uh I feel like you would even have more that's yeah. that's tied to that. I mean yeah. like like I mean you work with like uh you had the opportunity to work with like uh one of the I mean, honestly one of the most like pivotal people of like people in our generations, yeah. like lives. It's like you think about all it's a shame that it's like once people are gone uh, people start to like evaluate like how important people are and uh it's a shame that we had to do that yeah and uh, for you it's just like it's like that creativity like what was that like to like be in the same room with that it was wild man he's uh it was just crazy his work ethic was was unmatched yeah i mean i I don't know. I, I I think about like you know. I was I was thinking the other day because someone uh, I I looked on Instagram or on Twitter and I saw someone tweet uh, Mac Miller is the hardest uh, or is the greatest white rapper to ever live, and like you think about that and you're just like fuck like he really didn't like from an outsider's point of view it doesn't seem like he had a lot of negative things said about him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like everyone like mad people that are just like. OGs in the game respect like that person that oh, yeah. is from our hometown and like it's crazy and I, I was thinking like like do you think other kids like uh like 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 other kids like he made such an impact on other kids and like other people of our age like I don't know it's just wild to think like like I don't know I don't even know where I'm going with it it makes me <laughs> speechless it's just no, yeah. it's it is crazy. wild man it's it's Cause you think of a person that like made music that grew with us, like people have certain artists that like have grew with us, and like that was like our age, like our age just mm-hmm. grew with us and progressed with us, and like we were able to see that. Swimming is definitely a good choice. Yeah, that's a it's a good choice. What's your favorite track off there? Man, I like ladders. Ladders is probably ladders or two thousand nine. Yeah, two thousand nine. For a minute, Diablo was my favorite track. Yeah, uh, Diablo. That's a good one. Diablo was dope. I loved it. And I think 2009 just like so sick. Jet Fuel's sick too. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Fuel's the whole reason that that he made that album. Really? That was like the first song he made, yeah. Jeez. Like the, yeah. Yeah, I mean like I'm sure that you've like heard crazy shit that like probably none of us will ever hear. Yeah, man. There's... It's, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome you got to experience that. I'm, I'm, I appreciate you uh, sharing a little bit of that. You I know mean. what I mean? Like... I understand, like, you had a different tie. Like, I'm not trying to, like, exploit no, your time I, I, I with know, him. Man, know, you know yeah. what I mean? But uh, it's, dope to, it's dope to be able to, like, hear some of them stories. Yeah. But uh, th- the second to last category is Desert or not Desert Island, but second to last category is Death Row Meal. Death Row Meal. Yeah, as much Ooh. as you want from wherever you want, whatever you want. Oh, man. So, like, I can have multiple things here? Multiple places, yeah. All right. Shit. So, and I, and I would, if, okay, so, I mean, the number one is going to be a cheesesteak, Philly cheesesteak. And, yeah. I, and I, I, if it was, if this wasn't death row and I was just in Pittsburgh, I would take, I would take streets because I really like, I really like their Philly. That's fine. And I like where it's inspired from, but I have to take the original, which is my favorite is Jim's. Jim's. In, in Philly. Is that Once. the one with all the, was all, is that like the, the famous one out there? So. Isn't there two? So Pat's and Gino's are the, are the two like, uh, those are like the ones that are right across from each yeah, other. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. To me, they're tourist traps. Not really down with <laughs> Pats and Genos. Okay, uh, Katrina would tell you otherwise. Me, I'm not down with Pats and Genos. I like Jim's on South Street. They are fucking. That's that is the the, the quintessential Philly cheesesteak in my eyes. I uh, honestly love Philly whenever I go there. Yeah, man. I, I just stopped there on the way back from Atlantic City the other Philly's day. Philly's dope. One. Yeah. Teams Philly's are trash, but... Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I, Don't I, get me started I, on them. It's definitely dope. Yeah, Philly, yeah, Philly's great, though. I like Philly. 
Um, so Philly cheesesteak right, with Wiz. Okay. Have to. Um, a whole lot of sushi from Nobu. Yeah. Um, man. Yeah, a lot of sushi from Nobu. Uh, probably some sushi from, from Umami as well because they do this miso torch salmon. Yeah, I still haven't gone there yet. Shout out Roger Lee. Uh, I should talk to, to him on here. You need to go, brother. That's my favorite restaurant in Pittsburgh, hands down. Really? I love that spot. Huh. Love that spot. I was just there. I went with Jerm on Friday. We went. Uh, Jerm and Sayas and Derek. It was really good. Uh, so I get some sushi from them. There's this thing I had at this spot in L.A. called Asanebo, and it was a um, black miso cod. And, man, was that it's like the I, I'm not really much of a fish guy other than like sushi yeah. and like cooked fish because it's like I'm not I don't know I'm weird about some fish but that was like the it was so like melted in your mouth it was so tasty and it was yeah. just like fucking delicious huh. that shit was fire I would need I would need some probably a whole pie from Fiori's from I would just get one from Minio's Fiori's and Aiello's just how I'd have like all three right there the big yeah. three um fuck man I love food me too those are good choices though. Like, yeah, I would need like a, f- a big ass filet from a from I don't know wherever whatever the like some wagyu <laughs> filet from a nice steakhouse just I don't know from where. I don't have any select places, but just a really good yeah. filet. Yeah. I'm sure you got to eat some dope shit traveling around. I mean, so I ate kangaroo in Australia, man. Really? Kangaroo sashimi. Yeah. Sashimi? It was raw? So, yes, at first. And then they bring out this, like, hot searing oil, and they, like, poured it, like, over it. So no it, like, way. Cooks it. Yeah, it was in Nobu in Australia. It, it was, was wild? It was wild, bro. How did it taste? Not bad. Like what, it wasn't. It, I was. It, was it good? Yeah. Like it. It didn't. I, I wouldn't have tasted it and been like, "Oh, this is kangaroo." But yeah. I wouldn't have been like, "Like what?" Like if you had to, if you had to, like equate it to anything, like was it like a gamey, like a bison? It was more. It wasn't like a bison. It. It was more like kangaroo. Man, it's. It was so weird. It was like closer to duck almost. Ah. Uh. But like still kind of like deer meat it's so it was a weird yeah, just like a bizarre i don't it even was know weird. what it would be I, like. i'll show you the picture after i'll pull it up because i took a picture of it and yeah you're, it's just it, the way it was it just kind of looks like a little meat patty but <laughs> it was good it was it was definitely kangaroo. interesting yeah kangaroo it was right. wild right. yeah I, I would say just the cheese steak some fillets pizza maybe a little uh like um, hibachi like fried rice in there a little shrimp fry I need some coconut shrimp man I love oh, some coconut, coconut shrimp coconut shrimp man. is good you ever have coconut rice no coconut rice is crazy they steam white rice in coconut milk and it gives Ooh. it like a sweet taste oh that sounds really good yeah it's it's fire uh, honestly Typhoon and Robinson got some good coconut rice even though it's like a touristy type place yeah. like uh, Americanized but uh, it's good as fuck oh. uh, they put me on to it up there. Coconut rice, though. I'll have to give that a try. Yeah, it's real good. Um, um, let me think. I probably got one. Oh, definitely a street noodle number one from Pussities. I hope they open again soon. Say it again. Pussities Garden. Have you ever been there? No. Wow. It's this Thai spot. They're closed right now because they're renovating. It's in Lawrenceville. I hope they're still renovating. It looked very, like, <laughs> not good when I drove past the other day. <laughs> so I don't know. I what hope- was it called? Pussity's Garden. No, no, no. I'm talking about what. To, oh, uh, Street Noodle Number One. Street Noodle Number yeah, One. It's just, it was just like this. You ever been to dish. the Golden Pig? I haven't. Where's the Golden Pig at? In Cecil. Cecil, PA. Uh, yeah. I, have, I don't go to Cecil, but I would go try. What is it? Dude, Someone told me about this place, actually. It's probably, uh, it's probably honestly like it's I the whole. My, I think my girl told me about this place. The whole entire place is probably smaller than this room, this, just this room. And uh, there's. Six bar stools and one little four ta- four top yeah. table, and uh, I think it's just this lady and her husband, and yes. they go ham yeah, in this she, kitchen. She told me about that. I remember. Dumb. It's dumb. You go there, and uh, it's just like it's basically like you're going into this lady's house, and she's just cooking you home cooked food, and like uh, the ramen there, whew, unreal. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Golden yeah. Pig. You got to go there. I'll have to check that out. All right. Um, 
And the last category or the last question I ask everyone is if uh, you had an opportunity to have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? Man. Oh, boy. I had a really good one when I when I when I listened to this uh, like like two weeks ago. I listened to your podcast and I I was like, oh, yeah, that's the one. And now I don't remember again. That's all right. I want to, oh, I had a really good one. Like my, my first like initial thought would be like Frank Sinatra. Oh, that would be crazy. Like that would be, that would be my, I mean, as you can see, I got some Frank hanging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That would be a good, that would be a good choice. There's a lot of cool people that you'd be able yeah, to talk to. So many, man. Like that's what I'm saying. Imagine being able to have a conversation with Robin Williams. Oh yeah. <laughs> Richard Pryor. Chris Farley. Like, oh my God. Chris Farley might be it, man. Dude, that's, Chris Farley would be insane to talk with. That's like one dude. Like, he's uh, alive. I, I would still, even though I haven't met him, I would say Kevin Smith because I, I fucking love that dude. Yeah. I don't have that tie of like comic book, like stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, even if even if it wasn't comic book related, like, yeah. I just, that, aside from comics, like I just like, Oh, I love though. I've always been a fan of his, his like comedy, like it just, his style of humor yeah. and his movies. I've always loved his movies. Like so. Jane Silent Bob and everything. Yeah. Like, I mean, I like clerks is like, yeah. the original clerks, like mall rats. Like those are some of my favorite movies. Like yeah, those are, I, I love the, I, I definitely like mall rats. Uh, that was really great. Um, he, he does have good movies. Yeah. It's yeah. wild how he almost died. And then, just yeah. lost all that fucking weight. Yeah, man. He looks like a fucking bean now. Yeah, he looks so different, but he's like in great health and good because I fucking he's the man. He's, he's ate a bunch of potatoes. Yeah, man. He's he's sick. Like I I fucking love Kevin Smith. That's a good choice too. I mean, I'm sure that he has some oh, some cool yeah, shit to definitely. talk about. I mean, did you like? Did you see? Are you a Marvel guy? No, no. So he got like a you, you remember Marats? He had Stan Lee in yeah Marats. So like they did like a payoff in that captain marvel movie yeah so they like stanley had a cameo because it was based in the 90s so like he's riding the bus and stanley is like reading the mall rat script ah. like on the on the bus so he's like but he's playing himself yeah so he's like reading the script and he's like excelsior and he's like just like reading it like <laughs> that's awesome practicing his lines and it's so sick i was like that's so fucking cool. like that yeah that's to dope. me like that was like one of the coolest things they did because i was like Fucking Kevin Smith, fucking in the like he's in there now. Like they, yeah, like that's made nuts. Kevin Smith put him in the Marvel movies. Like that shit's so to me. Yeah, like I love that's Marvel. Dope. I love Kevin Smith. Came together. I thought that was awesome. Very sick. That's a good choice. A lot of good people to talk to. Oh yeah. Um. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Oh yeah, man. This is a long time coming. Long time. Uh, it was definitely a. Uh, interesting conversation you have a uh, you have an interesting path about you so yeah. take anything uh promote anything you want um yeah i don't know i have an instagram justin boyd photo that's yeah. me justin boyd photo i take pictures uh hire me scroll down yeah i'll put it all in the description i'll and, take your food photos it's my new thing right now yeah <laughs> food photos they make me hungry on Instagram. Uh, everyone else that's listening, I'll call you right back across the board. I'll call you right back on Instagram. If you got a guest, oh, I got some good ass people coming up. I'm going to tour Turner's Dairy next weekend, Ooh. and I'm about to talk to the Turners on that's this podcast. Sick. So, Fuck yeah. for people that waited till the end of this podcast, you got a little prequel. Uh, I don't know when that'll come out, but that's definitely coming soon. And uh, we got some other good shit coming, so stay tuned. New shirts on the way as well. I'll call you right back.